A passenger has been forced to stand for a seven-hour airline flight. U.S. Airways Flight 901 is one of the longest domestic nonstop flights. I believe it was from Anchorage to, I would assume, since it's, it's U.S. Airways, it was to Philadelphia. And Arthur Berkowitz knows exactly how long it takes down to the minute because he had to stand for most of the flight when he returned to Philadelphia last July. Why would anyone stand for that long, you would ask Lewis? Well, he was next to a morbidly obese passenger who was, as we know can happen, as I've talked about, spilling into his personal space, making it impossible for him to sit in his assigned seat. The flight was full. You've dealt with this, Lewis, haven't you? Yeah, so have you. I've dealt with it many times. And um, he said that the man's size required both armrests to be raised up and allowed for his (laughs) body to cover half of the other guy's seat. So... This meets two of the three requirements, Lewis. And you know the requirements for a a passenger of size. Spilling onto another seat, armrest can't be down. My understanding is the obese gentleman was perfectly nice. He realized what an inconvenience he was causing. My question is this. If I have a hardcover book out on my lap during takeoff, the flight attendants make me put that away because anything more than a paperback represents a risk during takeoff or landing. It might fly back and hit someone. The passenger was standing the entire time, and that's not a safety risk? You know, sometimes I wish I could stand for the duration of a flight, but a seven-hour one is a bit too much. Seven hours is a bit much. And Berkowitz immediately notified the flight attendants about the passenger. He says they were sympathetic, but they could do nothing. There were no other seats. Now, here's the thing. The worst nightmare for airlines is for a passenger to be involuntarily denied boarding, okay? voluntarily denied boarding would be the flight's overbooked. We're asking for volunteers. You get your $400 voucher and we'll put you on first class on the next flight. Okay. That's okay. Involuntarily denied boarding means that the person was, was refused boarding involuntarily. It needs to be reported to the department of transportation and it's subject to the maximum compensation for the passenger. I actually would argue that if a flight is, is, is full, and you're next to a passenger of size, and this has happened to me, it happened to me recently, flying from Kansas City to, to O'Hare on a United flight, United Express. If the flight, if you have less than a full seat available, let's say there's 60 seats on the plane, there's room for 60 people and there's 60 and a half. In other words, I only have half a seat. Mm-hmm. I would argue that that plane is oversold and that I would be able to make the case I was involuntarily denied boarding. I bought a seat and I wasn't given a seat, and nobody told me, gave me any option. And that's a big deal for these airline companies, and that's why they're actually reporting this, or rather, why they're trying to cover this type of thing up, because it's really going to be a problem. And after he returned, Berkowitz wrote an email to U.S. Airways asking for a refund or a voucher for the full value of the flight, which was about $800. They gave him 200 bucks. Christopher Elliott, who's an advocate for airline passengers, contacted U.S. Airways on his behalf, and they said, we have made our last and best offer, which is 200 bucks. Uh, this is a problem. I understand it, it sometimes might not be over. this is glandular, and there are different conditions. I get that people say, you know, it's not someone's decision to be overweight, but it's not the decision of the passenger who buys a seat and only has half a seat either. Listen, no, no passenger of size is going to buy two seats sometimes they're forced to voluntarily sometimes they're forced to but oh, uh, like like you told me when they show up at the check-in desk uh, the person helping them is supposed to make the determination as to whether or not they right. should be purchasing two seats but, and they never but you're there two hours before the flight and chances are the flight is already booked absolutely so i mean i said this kind of half joking but i mean there might be some truth to it the only way to actually regulate this would be to have some type of database of massively overweight people who you oh, know God, need, here we i mean go. Am I wrong? Otherwise, there's just no way. You, there's nothing you can do about it. Moving on, I'm going to. I don't even want to delve into that. Right no, now. I, I know it's crazy. I know it'll never happen. But how else would you regulate it? I I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to be on the West Coast in a couple uh, a couple weeks. I'm going to try to get. I, I will opt for a pat down if presented with the porno scanner option. I will opt for the porno pat down, and I'm going to do everything I can to get video of that pat down because I've had four of these things now. They're shaking out my pants. They're tickling my armpits. And I really want to bring this to the David Pakman Show audience. So I will do anything I can to get video of that. Uh, Let's take a break. On the bonus show, we'll talk about five sports fans who ruin sports, Israel uh, being threatened by Iran, and plenty more. Go to davidpakman.com slash membership. Get a membership, Lewis. It's time 